I'll uh, get into the uh, topic. Actually, our first speaker is Fade Henry. Uh, Fane Henry is a certified information and referral specialist who is manager of training and outreach with Find Help Information Services in Toronto. He has worked in various capacities at Find Help since 1989, and he regularly conducts training and credentialing programs related to information, assessment, and referral throughout Ontario and North America. Fade has served as a chairperson of the Alliance of Information and Referral Systems, Standards Committee which developed the most recent edition of the Professional Standards for Information and Referral and Quality Indicators. That's a lot of stuff about information referral. Ayers is a professional member association with over 1,000 organizations. Fade is currently president of Ayers and conducts regular accreditation site visits to community information centers and 211 agencies throughout North America. Fade conducts regular workshops, information referral and communication skills, as well as understanding the human services system. He has provided hundreds of customized training workshops and, consist and consistently strong evaluations and positive feedback. Okay. In his spare time, he volunteers as a youth soccer coach with the East York Soccer Club. I present to you, Fade Henry. Very glad to be here at North York Central Library today. Um, I want to thank Doug and Lorraine for um, organizing these um, events. I think these are a great opportunity for us to learn, share, network, and collaborate with one another. This is my actually third um, event that I've had the opportunity to attend and each time um, I come away um, learning something new um, and I hope you're able to learn something new today from our discussion on information and referral. When Doug invited me to speak at this event um, he really sort of just asked to talk about um, some of the current practices as a settlement worker. If you're a manager um, of a program or you're looking at it through an organizational perspective, uh, how can we make our information and referral program a strong, viable program? And if we're looking at it from a systemic or system perspective, that might look entirely different. Um, I'm going to start off talking about a few assumptions and assertions, and I don't think this will come uh, as any surprise to anyone in this room. Um, Information referral is a critical part of settlement work. In fact, they are inextricably interwound. I don't believe you can provide settlement work without providing information and referral. And in fact, information and referral is one of the five functional areas of settlement work. So regardless if you're a job search workshop facilitator, a host or mentoring program coordinator, um, a link assessor, uh, or a settlement uh, worker, information and referral is a component of your job and a fairly significant component at that. Um, with the new modernized approach um, to settlement services, CIC has a number of different um, programming areas and you see the five areas being orientation, language skills, employment, labor market access, welcoming communities, and policy and program development. And then on the right-hand side, you have the six different streams. And if you just look at that, they all in some way, shape, or form relate to information and referral service provision. I want to talk about some of the current practices in the field of INR, and I've sort of broken them down into sort of five areas. And I think the most important area is what I would refer to as multi-channel or additional channels for access. Um, I started back um, with Find Help Information Services, which wasn't even called Find Help Information Services, back in 1989. Um, and I started out on the overnight shift answering the telephone. And back then, this is what we had. I remember having an old rotary black and white phone. I remember having a Rolodex in front of me with organizations listed from A to Z. I remember having the Blue Book, the Directory of Community Services, which listed about 1,500 social, human, and government service organizations. I remember having cheat sheets posted all over my desk and little yellow stick, stick, stick notes all over my desk with frequently called numbers. And in a few short years, we've gone from this to this. 
how people are accessing information is dramatically changing. Um, people are accessing information through mobile apps, through Twitter, through uh, Facebook, through um, different types of social media. And this, I think, also presents one of the challenges for our sector. It's being able to use technology effectively to benefit our clients. So we have social media. How many of you actually, probably most of you have a Facebook page in this room? How many of you have a Twitter account in this room? How many of you registered or found out about this very event through Twitter or some other so form of social media? Um, we have wikis. We have settlement, the settlement wiki. Um, we have podcasts. We have listservs. We have discussion boards. We have really simple syndication feeds, RSS feeds. So how we're accessing information um, is really, really changing significantly. This is just an example of the Okasi um, Twitter feed. How many of you follow that? There is an example of one for 211. Ontario has a Twitter feed and a Twitter account that people can access. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what happened about a year ago last year. Um, in August of last year, some of you will probably remember the F3 tornado that came through um, Godrich. And an organization up in that area called Community Connection Collingwood, within the first 12 hours of the tornado, had set up a Facebook page called Godrich Ontario Tornado Victims and Support page. The interesting thing about this was it had, um, in the first 12 hours, it had 7,000 followers to it. The interesting thing is that the population of Godrich is only 7,500. But this proved to be a very um, useful tool to get important and timely information out regarding what is open, what is closed, regarding the coordination of volunteers um, and donations. Um, the advantage of social media is you're able to target a much wider audience um, in a very specific, quick amount of time. There are new mobile apps now for information and referral. This is an example of a mobile app for the 211 service in Tampa Bay. And the 211 service in Ontario is also developing their own mo mobile app so clients can have access or service providers can have access um, to resources. Um, they can save resources and they can get services that are um, close to their proximity or services according to what type of program or service they are actually looking for. Other ways clients are accessing services are through things like um, instant messaging and chat. The YMCA for Hamilton, Burlington and Bradford um, allows clients to access the services of a settlement worker through online chat by going to a chat room. So clients can actually set up an appointment with a settlement counselor. Um, and instead of leaving their home and going to the settlement agency, they can do this from the comfort of their home. Another way we are, or organizations are, um, creating multi-channel access to information. Settlement kiosks. There are over 50 settlement kiosks, I believe, in the uh, province of Ontario now. Many of them are at um, some of the CIC centers, but I understand a lot of the CIC centers are actually sort of closing, but there are a lot at Service Canada centers throughout the province of Ontario. And this um, is a self-serve kiosk that allows newcomers to access information on a wide range of social, human, and government programs, from employment services to housing services to um, language training programs. Um, welcome centers in New York region. Um, have developed a mobile outreach van. They have a van that goes around to the nine municipalities in York Region, as well as the South Simcoe area, to bring services to the actual people. 
So instead of clients having to go to one of four or five welcome centers in York Region, this will actually go to different communities. And there's a schedule of where they stop and where they will be. So if you look at York Region, it's the largest geographic region in the greater Toronto area. So on Tuesday, they might be up in Pefferlaw. Another day, they might be in Keswick. They might go to Aurelia. There's an actual schedule so newcomers or people needing the services of the welcome centers know where they will be at any given time or date. Um, these are examples of how people, I think, are accessing information. And it's not just for our clients. I think it also has implications for settlement workers. And I think one of the most important um, considerations to be mindful of is that um, really the additional channels of access are designed to provide more choice and more option for our clients for independent access. But I think it's also important to remember, and I'm going to quote the standards for professional information referral here, the main role of technology is to enhance or strengthen person-to-person -person contact, not to reduce or discourage such contact or make it more difficult. So these new channels should be viewed as enhancements, not actually replacing or duplicating the existing services and the existing role of the settlement worker. I want to talk a little bit about standards for professional information referral. I know some people are sort of surprised to hear that there is such a thing as standards for professional information referral. In fact, the standards have been around since 1973, so they're probably as old or older than some people in this room. And they address um, really all aspects of an information and referral organization. They establish benchmarks and uh, define sort of reference points that look at sort of the best practices or expected practices within the field of information and referral. They are broken down into sort of six areas, um, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to uh, belabor the standards a lot or talk about them a lot, uh, because between you and me, standards are really boring. But they are important because they do provide a foundation um, for us when we're, we're looking at designing, delivering, or developing information and referral programs. The six areas are service delivery standards, resource database standards, reports and measures, cooperative relationships or partnerships, disaster planning and preparedness is the fifth area, and the final, of, the final area is organizational requirements. Now you may ask, you know, how do the standards relate to settlement work? Or do the standards? relate to settlement work. Um, I think some of the standards for professional information referral um, do relate to settlement work more closely than others. For example, I think service delivery standards relate to settlement work because they're really talking a lot about the function and the role of the settlement worker or the information and referral provider in terms of assessment and referral provision, in terms of advocacy, follow-up, crisis intervention. Other standards may not apply necessarily to the settlement services sector, such as disaster preparedness or a resource database. Many of you don't have a resource database. You may be relying on a resource database like settlement.org or 211 Ontario. So I think how you use the standards is up to the discretion of the individual settlement worker and of the individual settlement organization. They're constantly being updated um, as technologies changes, as situations and circumstances change, so do the standards. Um, in fact, this week, um, AIRS is finalizing new standards that will be released to the field in 2013. And one of the new standards will be a standard around technology and use of social media. The standards also serve two very important um, credentialing programs, one um, being AIRS certification. 
individuals can become certified as information and referral specialists or resource specialists. Um, and its certification is an internationally recognized um, credentialing program for individuals working within this, the INR sector. And this includes settlement workers. Um, in Ontario, believe it or not, Ontario um, has more certified information referral specialists now um, than anywhere in all of North America. There is about 3,300 people who are certified in North America. About 300 of them are in this very province of Ontario. Um, most of the people who work at 211 um, are certified as information referral specialists or resource specialists. But in addition to that, uh, many other organizations have provided their frontline staff with the opportunity to be certified. Um, many staff at Employment Ontario or the Community Care Access Centers are certified. And in fact, many organizations that provide settlement work have their staff um, certified. Um, the Center for Information and Community Services, CultureLink, um, or just a f uh, Center for Community Learning and Development. Um, these are examples of settlement organizations that have had their staff certified. 